Hello, my name is Nick Ockingay. So the business that I decided to do was is Ockingay Farms. And Ockingay Farms, which would be my family's farm, it is located in Glenville, Nebraska, which is about 14 miles southeast of Hastings, Nebraska. This is a diversified operation. So we are running row crop and cow-calf. So we farm about a thousand acres of corn and soybeans. We have around 500 acres of pasture, a hundred acres of hay ground. So that's a little bit of alfalfa, uh, grass hay, and we'll do some oats. And then we do a little bit of wheat, but that's just for the straw for bedding in our sheds, in our calving sheds. And then we run 150 head of registered Angus cattle. So on the home place, there's several lots and buildings. So we have a good sized feed lot and then we have uh, alleyways and good places to sort and to work calves and cattle. So um, with a squeeze chute, everything. So everything's good and set up there. Uh, we have a 20 by 30 calving shed then a 30 by 35 calving shed that we calve stuff out in the bad weather. And other than that, we usually do. We have a pasture we calve them in, or they'll sometimes calve in the cornfield. It depends on the weather. Um, we have a 54 by 96 Morton building, and that's where we keep, we have a few straight trucks with uh, ethanol pellets and like some wheat and oats and stuff in there that we use to grind our creep feed. Um, then we keep our baler, our payloaders. We have like three tractors, a uh, grinder mixer and our feed wagon in there. Then we have a 66 by 152 Morton building and that's our main shop. So if anything need, needs worked on, we take it to there and that's our main storage. So we keep our big tractors in there, our combine, our semis, and like our planters and grain cart and our heads and all that sort of stuff. Uh, we also have a little bit of grain storage on the home place. We have two 30,000 bushel bins and we pretty much, we raise an 80 of white corn. So we kind of just, you know, we put our white corn in that. Um, and we have one 10,000 bushel bin and that's just, we have a little bit of irrigated corn we bring to the house and, uh, to the, to that, uh, bin there. And we use that for feeding. So we use that to grind our grain for our cattle. Equipment, we have two payloaders, uh, an older one, a 544B John Deere, and then we have a 524K John Deere. And I'd say the 544B, that's probably worth maybe 15,000, and the 524K is probably worth 130,000. Uh, we have five John Deere tractors that we use. We have a 4010, and that pretty much stays on our grinder mixer. It doesn't do a whole lot else. Um, a 4020, uh, we feed with that. We run our augers and stuff with that when we're hauling to and from the bins. Uh, we have a 4440 and that tractor, it box scrapes lots. Uh, it also bales hay and a few other things. Sometimes we'll feed with it, it just depends. Um, then we have a John Deere 8200 and we shred stocks and mow roadsides and other things like that. It kind of depends, you know, and we also have a John Deere 8245R. And see, that's the 8200 is probably worth 100,000. Uh, the 4010 and the 4020, they're probably worth that 10,000 mark. 4440, I'd say 35,000. And the 8245R is probably worth 150,000. But uh, at 8245R, we use that to uh, plant anhydrous. 
uh, around the grain cart, other things like that. Uh, we have a John Deere combine, and that's probably worth, it's it's an older one, but it's decent shape, but it's probably worth 60000 and the heads are probably 10000 apiece. They have four semis and grain trailers, and the sem each semi is probably worth twenty five to thirty thousand, and the grain trailers are worth thirty five to forty thousand. We have a twelve row John Deere planter stack fold, and I'd say that's worth oh fifty thousand. Then a sixteen row planter that we use strictly for beans because it is spaced at eighteen inches, so you get it canopies a lot sooner. That's it's pretty cheap. It's only worth about, I'd say, three thousand. We have a J and M grain cart. I'd say that's worth ten thousand. Rhino stock shredder, and the John Deere Batwing shredder for mowed, uh, mowing roadsides. They're probably around that fifteen thousand range. Um, a uh, Great Plains excavator that's probably worth thirty. Bobcat skid loader plus attachments. That's probably worth 20. 535 baler, John Deere baler, that's probably worth, I'd say like six or 8,000. Um, equipment that will be needed soon. I would like to get a new mixer wagon to get more accurate rations and stuff and everybody, all the cattle get the same. It's with our feed wagon now, it's not good at that. But a new one of those is probably 30,000. Front wheel assist loader tractor has probably, depending on what you get, uh, one hundred and sixty to two hundred thousand. A new S, not a new, but a newer S series combine that's probably two hundred thousand. And I want to start integrating cover crops on our farm just for grazing and nitrogen fixation. So that would be around a hundred thousand for a no-till drill. And an anhydrous applicator, I would say that would be about 50000 Now our expenses. Fall of 2021, we have a purchase agreement on a farm for 8000 an acre. I am guessing that will probably take 10 years to 9 or 10 years to get that paid for. Um, we are looking to take on more ground, so it really depends on the price for that it depends on the landlord it depends on soil types everything like that and we're wanting to get an, another r series john deere tractor the fall of 2021 and really that depends on what hours you're getting on it or what the hours are when you buy it and everything but our range is probably around that 200,000 to 100, 150 to 200,000 range for dryland uh, farm ground, uh, right now that's around $150 an acre, you know, and our irrigated rent, that's anywhere from 250 to 325. It depends on if you're providing the pivot or if the landlord is how new of a pivot is, if you're doing all the work on it and the type of ground, if it's rough, if it's flat. Uh, we pay about seventy thousand dollars in seed for our corn and soybeans, and another sixty thousand in fertilizer. Our fuel costs really depend on the year, depends what the prices are, obviously. But on it, normal years they're anywhere between eighteen thousand to twenty six thousand. But that depends on how much you're irrigating too. Crop insurance that's usually runs between 20 and 30,000 and then our repairs it's 12,000 but that's also counting pre preventative maintenance so each fall after we're done harvesting we run our combine through John Deere and they look at everything and they tell you what exactly you need to do you know they say well this part you probably could run another year on it but and this one you can't so and it really, it saves you a lot of time and saves you a lot of money when you do that. Um, then our insurance for the equipment, that's 12000 And what we're yielding, so irrigated corn, that's 275 to 300 bushel an acre. 
it depends on the farm it depends on the type of the t soil type you know if your ground's flat smooth you know flat or has hills or what but it depends a lot on that but on most of our stuff we're averaging between 275 to 290 some a few farms 300 uh irrigated beans that's a right between 80 and 90 we've had a few this last fall that were a little above 90 bushels an acre and dryland corn that really depends because like up by glenville a lot of times you can get 180 bushel corn but then down we have farms south of blue hill nebraska and those are they'll yield 160 you know it's nothing like what it is north farther and the dryland beans like up closer to glenville it's 70 bushels an acre and down towards uh blue hill south of blue hill there it's between 45 and 50 and eight bushels an acre now our cattle so we start to calve february 20th and we go i would say through april and then we'll have a few in may not very many uh um, they, we try to make him go to grass between May 1st and May 15th. It depends on the year, how much grass you have. And they are usually there until about September 15th. Cause, uh, our cattle go to our south farm, south of Blue Hill, Nebraska. And we can usually get that dry land corn out around the 15th of September on the right year. So then we have corn stalks there and to where they're not in our pasture eating grass and stuff. They're in the corn stalks. They do a lot better that way. And then we can finish our harvest. Then we move them back up to home. Oh, around October 15th, I would say, to the farms up home. So, and they're on corn stalks to end of March to start of May around there kind of depends on the year with that again but uh when they start calving like we'll take them home it depends on the weather and it really depends on if it's a heifer you know we'll make sure it's home so we can keep a closer eye on it uh we brand and vaccinate calves right before uh we take them to grass so that is around we'll start end of april end of may just depends on weather and how we are on our planting and stuff um yeah we run and we have them on creep feeders all summer and then we wean i'd say october 1st to the 15th it really depends on when we get done with harvest so we have corn stalks for our other cattle so we uh we all, how we wean, we leave our calves at the pasture and everybody thinks it's odd, but it's all, we've done it for years and we've weaned cattle or we've weaned calves every way you can. And it's worked best because when they're at that pasture, they've been there their whole, most of their life and that's what they know. So they don't try to run off. And when you move them somewhere, then that's when you have cattle or have calves running getting out and everything so we just do it that way and we've had good luck for the past few years uh, we try to sell calves in february and they get to around that seven eight hundred pound mark there and we usually try to keep 10 to 20 replacement heifers a year it really depends on the year i guess and how many you know how many older cows we have we try to get rid of about 10 to 20 older cows a year you might as well get $500 out of them as to have the dead truck pick them up. Um, when we feed, so we feed uh, corn silage, distillers, uh, ground hay, and our ground hay is, it goes two corn stalk bales for one uh, alfalfa bale. So we just kind of mix it like that. And we do like a full payloader bucket of which I guess that's hard to count how that is, but we do, I'd say, two-thirds of that ground hay, which is alfalfa and corn stalks, and we do 
oh, a couple hundred pounds of distillers. And on our calves, we give them, I'd say like 10 bushel of grain in there or 15. And then we do about a third silage and it works out pretty good. They gain pretty well from that. So the distillers, that's $150 a, a ton for that, for wet distillers. Um, we cut 40 acres of corn for silage each year, and that's about 4,000 acres to have that done. So, or $4,000 to have that done, excuse me. But, uh, so it'd be seven and a half dollars per ton to have them cut and haul the, haul the silage. But that's if you're packing it yourself, which we pack, uh, we pack our silage ourselves, um, Salt and mineral tubs, that's about 6000 for that for year rounds. And alfalfa, like we raise our own, but it, it goes for about $100 a ton. Corn stock bales, um, if you were buying them, it's $55 a ton, but it's like 30 or it's $15 a bale if it's your own corn stocks, but you have uh, somebody who's doing a haying business if you have them come and custom do that. Um, let's see, grass hay, that runs about $75 a ton, and we cut, we swath and bale our own hay. And then we also do some roadside hay too, and you can get that, you can get five miles for $40, so it works out pretty good. Um, and then when we grind hay, we have a guy out of Blue Hill come up and grind for us and he charges $360 per hour to do that so I mean it works out you can get 100 bales ground in an hour so it's it's well worth it so my goals for the operation in five years I would like us to be at 1800 acres like to upgrade that equipment because uh we're probably going to get that a uh, newer tractor and that farm later this fall, but I'm thinking like the mixer wagon and the front wheel assist tractor and like the no-till drill, that might not come until a couple years after. But and then uh, my goal, oh yeah, and to have 250 cows for the five-year goal. And my goal for 10 years is to farm, twenty have 25 acres of farm ground and run about 500 cows so and have pasture enough pasture for that but so thanks for watching